Hello and welcome to today's video for Fat Tail Daily. I'm joined by our gold expert and stock investor, Brian Chu. Brian, welcome, buddy. You've been away for a couple of weeks. You've been to Singapore, you've been to Hong Kong. How was the trip? Hey, Woody. Uh, it was actually quite a short two weeks uh, when I think about it. While I was in Singapore, I think time went by a bit slower than in Hong Kong, even though I was in Singapore for only four days um, and Hong Kong for about 11. Um, but I was keeping an eye on the uh, markets uh, as well. And I was uh, quite surprised when I watched gold just go higher, higher and higher, uh, breaking above 2,700 US dollars an ounce. I believe it was around um, early last week. And I watched gold soar above 4,000 Australian dollars the night, uh, the night before I flew out of Singapore exactly two weeks ago. Um, and it gave me a bit of a wealth effect. Uh, I felt a little bit richer, so I could spend a little bit more. And we can certainly talk a little bit about that uh, in uh, today's chat. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you, you, we've been talking about the, uh, we, you always said this, it, the, it, the, the snap was coming and gold's been in a pretty, uh, obviously there's been pullbacks here and there, but it's in a pretty sustained bull run. The thing that's lagged behind is the gold stocks. The Well, specifically, I know producers have, have moved uh, r more recently, but developers and explorers. It's a very exciting opportunity taking place in that side of things because things are starting to move. And you said today that it can be very quiet for a couple of years and then bang, it all seems to happen at once. But um, typically, you've been, you were away when it all started kicking off. <laughs> but you, you, you've remained in touch. But one thing I wanted to just start with, because... You talk about it all in your piece today in Fat Tail Daily. Um, you did mention that one thing you observed in Hong Kong was, was like crypto exchanges um, in Hong Kong, despite perceived Chinese restrictions. So I was going to just ask to start things off. How do you see this intersection between traditional gold investment and digital curries, currencies playing out on the ground in, in the Asian market? Yeah, that's an interesting um, thing that I, ob I observed the day I landed into Hong Kong and um, we went out to dinner um, in Yao Ma Te, which is like in the middle of the busiest part of Kowloon in Hong Kong. And we're wondering what types of food to eat because um, Cindy, my wife, uh, would prefer more local food. I was kind of, uh, I had a couple of days in Singapore and I was uh, I'm a bit of a Westerner when it comes to food. If I if I'm on Asian food for too long, I'll crave for a steak. And uh, yeah. we, as we're walking down Nathan Road, one of the busiest streets in Kowloon, I noticed that there was an exchange uh, for crypto, uh, a crypto exchange uh, kiosk, and they were offering USDT, USD Tether, for Hong Kong dollars, for Australian dollars, etc. And um, I browsed that, and I was thinking. That's interesting because isn't uh, isn't the Chinese authorities uh, just like the U.S. Uh, Securities Exchange Commission? Um, they're against cryptocurrencies. That if it, the fact that they're allowed to run in Hong Kong tells me that um, perhaps we're not being told the um, what what's actually what what's really going on in Hong Kong. Now the property prices in Hong Kong, being one of the world's most expensive has actually dropped about 20% from its peak about two, three years ago. Now, that has hit Hong Kong people quite hard, given that the typical Hong Kong local uh, and Asians in general believe that uh, properties are the safest assets in the world, and they would literally put 90 to 110% of their wealth uh, in residential property. So now that that's taken a hit and you also have the post-pandemic slump because of um, lockdowns, because of restrictions, and you also have a mass exodus of Hong Kong locals to the UK, to Australia, to Canada after the 2019 protests. So as I've written last year, the Hong Kong economy, when I was there last year in November and December, you could feel that it was quite dire. Prices, inflation hit Hong Kong um, food, services, etc. because of, um, well, it's hit everywhere uh, for the reason that uh, 
lockdowns led to lower productivity, and then you had people, um, you had the government pay people to stay at home, so prices increase and um, uh, as a result. This time round, you could feel that the prices didn't increase as much compared to last year, and I was quite familiar with the prices this time than I was last year when I had a bit of a shock because the last time prior to 2023 I went was 2018. And um, I, was, I was actually paying Sydney prices for a lot of things. This time around, it was mm. similar, but it was more bearable because uh, the Australian dollar, uh, because what well, my personal pur- purchasing power increased a bit thanks to gold. But you could feel that perhaps the reason for cryptos um, picking up in Hong Kong is because people are looking for alternatives outside of uh, the fiat currency. And um, I think that's actually what's happening. And um, so you have gold and cryptos now hopefully eating um, the fiat currency's lunch after it being the bully in the playground for so long. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's, let's go back to gold. Then, I thought it was an interesting observation you made and, and you mentioned it in your piece today. But you, show, you also show gold stocks lagging behind physical gold uh, until very recently. What specific factors do you think triggered this recent acceleration in gold stock performance? Yeah, so gold stocks bottomed along with gold in around September 2022. And then gold made a significant um, rally from, uh, from that time on. And that was because inflation had peaked and um, the rate rises slowed down. By, uh, by last year, the Federal Reserve stopped raising rates, and by the end of last year, they were talking about cutting rates. Now, gold stocks had a bit of a lull last year, despite the fact that gold was heading higher. And that was because the gold to oil ratio, how much uh, oil you could buy for one ounce of gold, was meandering between about 20 to 30. Above 25 is when gold producers hit a sweet spot where they are generating pretty um, generous revenue, uh, generous surpluses from their operations relative to them having to pay their, to keep the lights on and to mm-hmm. maintain their mines. The gold to oil ratio really started taking off this year in around uh, July or so as the price of oil started slumping from about $75 to $80 a barrel to below $70 a barrel, which is, um, which is where it's been at for quite a while. At the same time, since March this year, when the Federal Reserve announced that they would commit to at least three rate cuts, gold started going parabolic. So gold broke past $2,100 US dollars an ounce in March and in April, I believe it was. And now it's trading at $2,700 US dollars an ounce which is a phenomenal increase for a very stable commodity in the strictest sense. Uh, So gold in the short term may fluctuate, but in the long term, it generally rises between 2 to 5% per annum. But this year, gold's gone up 34% um, since the start of the year. It's it's probably the highest um, increase we've seen since 1979, uh, that's before I was, I believe both you and I were born. Um, and while gold stocks had been gently heading up prior to March 2024, it really started taking off at the second half of the year as a gold to oil ratio rose from 27 to 40, and that's where it is right now. Mm. Do you think you mentioned 1979? We uh, this is just the devil's advocate question. Like you know, you know what happens usually in markets when there's a huge run up. There's got to be some kind of pullback, regardless of the longer term bullish trend, right? And 1979. I mean, I think it peaked in 1980, yep. and uh, came back down to earth after then. Would you be expecting after such a big run this year a pullback at some stage? So I've advised some of my readers to take some profits on the larger gold producers because they have run up uh, significantly from their lows. So, for example, Evolution Mining is up to, it's above $5 and it 
it was at its bottom at a, in mid 2022 at about a dollar 85 or something. We haven't seen evolution money trade at five dollars since May 2021. And even though evolution mining is continuing to grow, it's expanding one of its mines and it's also uh, positioning to buy larger mines rather than um, run the smaller ones. They're actually cycling through the smaller ones, selling them off and buying the bigger ones. It's reached a point where I believe the upside is probably about 20-30% before it becomes quite overbought. And I'm weighing up, well, if what, what's the point of holding for another 20-30% to 30% more when the opportunities are in the smaller mines, uh, maybe the yeah. junior miners and maybe the explorers that still have more than 50% or even 200% upside, why not go for that? So in that sense, I believe that um, because gold has had a major run up, the larger stocks have also run and there is a lot of um, bullishness about where gold is. There could be a short term pullback simply from technical, um, from a technical argument, just like why I'm advising people to take some profits on the larger yeah. producers. But yeah. the economic narrative remains very favorable towards gold for the reason that we're now at the beginning of the rate cut cycle and gold f is yeah. favored gold gold favored by that and i believe neither president trump or kamala harris vice president kamala harris will make a difference whoever gets into power because both parties both policy lines are a lot are basically saying we're going to spend, it's just on different, uh, that there are different beneficiaries of it. Then none of them are actually saying we're going to uh, start pulling back on spending, we're going to borrow less. And um, the Federal Reserve is also poised to continue cutting rates simply to keep the economy um, mm -hmm. hobbling along. So that's why I believe uh, gold will remain quite bullish at least for the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah, cool. You, you, so you're talking about larger stocks there, but in, in, in your piece, you actually mentioned the speculative gold stocks index is showing similar patterns to what the larger gold indices have done. J just for j just for new listeners and readers, because I know obviously um, there, there may be some some listeners that uh, are new to your your analysis. Like, what what distinguishes a promising junior gold stock from an completely risky speculation in the current market like what what characteristics do you look at that's a good that's good that's a good question to ask because the novice investor would would probably mistaken share prices from the size of the company so and even even people who've invested in stock markets for a couple of uh, years would still say oh a five cent stock is cheap a $20 stock is expensive and therefore when they start buying stocks in a space that they're not familiar with and gold explorers would be one of them uh, in times like this they'll go well hey I I'm attracted by these penny stocks because they're obviously cheap but mm -hmm. within that is a hidden trap which you pointed out there are some which are absolute punts and then there are some which have long-term potential what differs between the two is the the ones with uh, long term potential have properties that have proven drill results. So a mine is basically a piece of ground that they're drilling holes into to try to identify whether an economic de economically viable deposit exists. So as you drill hundreds of holes into the ground, you want to be able to confirm that. All these holes may paint a picture that a viable deposit exists underneath the ground. The grades mm -hmm. are good. The, it's uh, in grounds that um, allow for extraction to be easier and for uh, processing and extracting these material in the processing plants to be possible. To, to, to be, um, you, you don't have to spend more than what you're going to receive selling it plus uh, keeping the lights on yeah yeah so that requires you to delve into these stories uh you also have to consider even the best deposit 
with a bad management or with a management whose heart might not be in the right place, uh, if the management is good, then they're going to come up with the plans to make the project, um, to bring the project forward, to make it economical, to generate revenues and profits. Uh, so these are the things that you have to consider. And looking simply at the price won't tell you anything. Looking at the speculative gold stocks index, which I created with my, uh, with my partner in uh, my business, um, which tracks 70 to 80 early stage companies. Watching the index go up, yeah, you can go and randomly buy these companies, these explorers, and some of them are going to go up, but a lot of them are going to give back uh, the value when the rally ends and many people yeah. are going to be very hurt if they do so so the difference is know the story know the management and you have to dig deep to understand what's going on good great advice brian i've got one more question for you now you, you kind of draw parallels with other commodity cycles like lithium and rare earths how do you see this gold bull market potentially differing from those cycles and if there's uh, what lessons can investors learn from them Okay, so what's... I'm firing the big gun questions at you today, Brian. Yep, and I, and I like it because uh, I think the readers are going, the, the viewers are going to be very much um, wanting to find answers to these. And given that we're at the, I would say we're in the mid, we're probably in the middle of the game uh, for the rally with uh, speculative gold stocks, but the second half is where it gets really exciting, just like in a um, in a really exciting soccer match. The first half may set the scene, but the second half is where the surprises and the momentum can carry through. And this is the same with speculative gold stocks. The, f the first uh, half of the rally, we have seen probably about 20% of the explorers uh, start taking off, the other 80% are lagging. Now, how does this differ from the other commodities to be very, very honest, there isn't a difference because gold explorers are just like any other commodity explorers. They will be, they will rally, they will catch the momentum, the manic phase leads to them going bananas, and then once that ends, it all plops back down to earth, except for the companies with true potential and even those get hit. Now, what makes a difference following someone who has experience in this rather than go it yourself is i have the indicators to help you work out when is time to quietly leave the party while it's raging and pocket the profits rather than stay till the very end and give back most of your gains and you only have a story to tell but not much uh, in your pocket to substantiate it i think that's probably the more important question to ask than mm -hmm. how is gold how are gold explorers any different to other commodity juniors great answer there brian um like i say we'll, we'll leave it there today because we've been going a while but if anyone's watching and you'd like to know more about what brian does obviously head over to the fat tail daily website the links below you'll see his piece today there's also an event on for that we're currently running it's up until midnight tonight. Now, today's Tuesday, so obviously in a few days' time that it won't be live, but um, the link for that is below too. And that is to Brian's uh, service, Gold Stock Pro, where he really delves in and gives specific recommendations of, of gold stocks. Now, Brian, you've been doing this all your life. You've gone through, oh, uh, how many this cycles now? Bad. Two or three key, yeah, key cycles. So you know what you're doing. You've got the battle scars to prove it, and you got you got the... Um, the wealth built up to prove it too because uh, it's not a plain sailing ride is it gold stocks it's um you've got to understand the cycle and when when to step in and when to step out yeah and uh, just to add in fact the last month gold stocks have actually gone up 25 percent uh in the space of a month uh mm -hmm. and for many people even experienced people like myself we know this is unusual and mm -hmm. this is where the momentum starts building up and the timing of your trades really matter at this stage. Cool. Well, there you go. We'll, we'll leave it to the viewers to do what they want. Thank you, Brian, for your time. Much appreciated. Always great to talk to you. And we'll see you again very soon. Thanks very much. And uh, God bless.